And now, the starting lineup for the Chicago Bulls. At yard, six foot six. Number nine, Harper. At yard, six foot six. Number 99, Player. Jefferson Webster here and today we're going to talk about my favorite basketball player of all time, Michael Jordan, and his erratic and unusual history in video games. I've broken this out into four sections during his career, so let's get started. Alright guys, let's talk about Skinny Jordan. If you look to the left, you'll notice a wealth of accomplishments. This was a defensive, fast, dunking Michael Jordan, and he was figuring out the game and figuring out how to beat his opponents. During this time, you'll notice a different variety of franchises that Jordan appeared in. The glaring omissions are arch rivals and double dribble, which were great games at the time. However, they didn't have an NBA affiliation, so they get a pass for that. The one common thread between all of these different franchises were they weren't very good. So to this point, we don't have a very good Jordan basketball game. So I'm gonna walk through some of these just to show you a little taste of what's going on and how they put Jordan into the games. <sighs> Jordan versus Bird on the NES. Here we go. Hey, guess what? Larry Bird can shoot the three and he's a little bit slower. Jordan's gonna be faster and he can dunk. Rebounding sucks in this game and that's pretty much all you're gonna get for this. It's one button to shoot and you have a steal and block option. For the three point shootout, they make you watch the computer go, which is tedious. Then it gets to your turn and you soon discover you have to press two buttons to release the ball and then if you go to grab another ball, it disappears before getting to the rim. So you have to wait every single time for it to get to the rim. For the dunk contest, the computer picks a slam. Then they will go through the animation and make it. They rarely miss. Then guess what? It's your turn and you have to figure out what the dunk is. If you've never seen or played this game before, you have no idea what the hell you're doing. So you just run around like a moron, tapping buttons until something happens. Then guess what? Two button combination again, and I missed. Damn it. Did Sega do any better? This game came out significantly later. It was in 1992 when this came out, and guess what? It sucks. It's slower, the graphics are a little bit better, but guess, ooh, Larry just dunked on Jordan. That would happen. <laughs> and on the other side, Jordan can't even drive past Larry. On the positive side, the three-point shootout is nice. I like the graphics, the presentation's nice, it plays well, and Larry Bird has a nice yellow afro. Pretty realistic. The dunk contest is awesome. It's hilariously bad. Jordan just hit his neck on the rim. I mean, that's just great. Now we move on to Tecmo. And if you have ever played Tecmo Bowl, you know that game is awesome and it's fun. So they're really gonna knock this out of the park with basketball, right? They've got the NBA rosters. It's gonna be a good time. It's got Jordan in it. Guess what? It sucks. The defense does not give you any flexibility. They're gonna be all over you. Conversely, when you play football, there's latitude and all you do is weave back and forth and you can score touchdowns. But watch this, here comes Jordan. Do, 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 follow me everywhere. Damn it, there's a foul. Sorry, MJ. Overall, I'd rather play double dribble than this. Let's move on. The next game is NBA All-Star Challenge. In this one, you can play one-on-one, -on -one, three-point shootout, and horse, and shoot free throws. The one-on-one -on -one piece is very similar to Jordan versus Bird. Uh, nothing to write home about here. Pretty basic. Now if we move on to the, N the SNES, very similar. Similar game modes. The graphics are better. I mean, it's going to be 16-bit, but same gameplay. Hey, guys. Want to practice shooting free throws? Said no one ever. Why is this in the game? Who wants to practice shooting free throws? And then finally, you have the three-point shootout, and it's pretty basic, so let's move on. Now we move on to the EA series of games. And I'm going to be most lenient on this franchise because they were still filling out what they were trying to do and improving along the way. So within this, you have Celtics versus Lakers, Jordan appeared, you have Bulls versus Lakers, and you have Bulls versus Blazers. And then finally, you have the 92 Dream Team game. And within all these, you know, there's nothing spectacular about them. The graphics for the time were on point, and they're kind of still trying to figure things out. 
if you think about Madden and you go back 20, 25 or 30 years ago, you had similar graphics, and it was basically an evolution of trying to get to where they want to go. Now, when you get to the 92 Dream Team game, I just want to play the game. I just want to be the Dream Team. But when I select the teams, it's got to give me a history lesson. I mean, look at this crap. I have to punch through all of this. I live in the United States. I don't want to hear this crap. Oh, let's go. Oh, now I have to hear about Lithuania? This is ridiculous. I could be up 20 points right now. All right, here we go. Who's Jordan? I guess it's the bald guy. I, I don't really know. Okay, I guess that was Jordan. Does that look like a nine to you? <sighs> Whatever. Yeah, this game, you know, same gameplay. Just USA. Whatever. On to the next one. Super Nintendo had a Bulls versus Blazers game. Same story. Better graphics. Uh, same gameplay. But, yeah, that's Jordan in EA. Going into the next phase of Jordan's career, his play and personal brand was at an all-time high. So much so that in 1992, he opted out of the National Basketball Player Association's shared licensing agreement. This meant that he would not license his likeness to NBA properties unless it was exclusively negotiated with him. Jordan claims that he wanted to only be in games that were a good representation of him in the game of basketball. <coughs> Bullshit! We all know it was about money. And that's why we were left with the games that we were left with. The most notable omissions at this time were midway properties, such as NBA Jam and NBA Hangtime, which consequently were the best basketball games of this era. Therefore, we got fewer games with Jordan in them, they were odd games that included his own personal sponsorships. And then we also had developers that were creating workarounds to try to get Jordan into the game. The story gets even more interesting when we talk about NBA Jam, as Mark Trammell was a diehard Detroit Pistons fan. And he admitted that he actually programmed against the Chicago Bulls because of his deep hatred for them. So if you ever go back and play NBA Jam, Odds are you're probably not going to make a last second shot due to programming in the game. In a recent interview, Tremel mentioned on Reddit that a ROM file actually exists with Michael Jordan in it. Basically what happened in the original version, he was removed because of the licensing situation. And back when the game came out, Gary Payton, who was also not in the game, really wanted the game for his children, so he contacted Midway. And Midway sent him three cabinets of himself and Michael Jordan included in the game. Midway also sent Michael Jordan arcade cabinets of the game as well. And you have to think that some of the developers or Midway has some of these cabinets. So it's possible that you could have played NBA GM with Michael Jordan in it, but it's not very likely. I have to think that a few cabinets do exist somewhere, but I've never played them. However, in a recent Reddit interview, this year is the 25th, 25th year anniversary of NBA Jam. And they're trying to figure out a way that they can release that original ROM file. So let's cross our fingers on that. The other thing to mention during this time is any point of contention in any greatest of all time GOAT conversation is that Michael Jordan didn't play two years in his prime. He was playing baseball. And during the time they said he was playing baseball because of the loss of his father. And that could have been true. But there's also an argument that he was caught gambling and he was suspended by the NBA. We can only speculate what happened, but either way, Michael Jordan was retired for two seasons of the game. During this time, it would have been great to have Michael Jordan as a hidden character in a baseball game, but we didn't get that. But you can always create him in the MLB, MLB The Show. Michael Jordan comes to the plate in a key spot. Go ahead, run it first Michael with nobody out. Jordan. And it's going to be interesting to see how they decide to play it here. Some would try to manufacture that run with a sacrifice or maybe even a steal. And others say, hey, let them swing. Don't give away any outs. Mm, a little tardy there. No balls and a strike. And after three strikeouts already, you can bet he's going to be pressing up there at the plate, trying to make something happen. And that just might make things worse. 0-1 count, and the pitch. 
Just the fastball oh, by him here, and he's in control 0-2. Oh, and you can tell by these first couple swings, he's not just looking to poke one through the right side of the infield. He's looking to put something into orbit. And he struck him out again. So that's the old sombrero there, partner. As a consequence of all of these happenings, let's talk about the Jordan games during this era. Well, guys, here's when things get weird. So following the licensing agreement that Jordan opted out of, we were left with these games. And this is when Michael Jordan was the greatest player in the game, if not ever, to play the game. There were other games during this time that were better than what we got. We had Tecmo, NBA Showdown, NBA Live, Space Jam, and Windy City Chaos. It's kind of a weird cluster of games that he appeared in, and there was no consistency. A lot of the games in the early 90s were just based off the old contract so they could put him in the games, but after that, it was hit and miss if you were going to get Jordan. So let's go through some of these craptastic games. Tecmo on the Sega Genesis. Jordan is in the game. However, on the Super Nintendo, Jordan is not in the game. Also, Horace Grant's range begins when he enters the gym. Now we move on to NBA Showdown, which is basically an early version of NBA Live. Jordan is in the game. And this game kind of sucks. It's one of the early live versions. So there that is. NBA Live 96 on Super Nintendo. Jordan is in the game. He's going to steal it. And he's going to dunk it. Now when you get to the PlayStation 96 version of NBA Live, oddly enough, he's not in the game. You go to substitute him during a game, and he's nowhere to be found. So you have to go into the rosters and add him into the game. It's number 62, and it says player. Michael Jordan in flight on the DOS. I don't have this game. Here's some screenshots. It looks a lot like NCAA basketball on Nintendo 64. Space Jam. Critics were very harsh of this game. They gave it a 3 out of 10. It's playable. It's not bad. I would probably give it a 5 out of 10. I think the one thing that really would have made this game awesome for me is if you would have had Bill Murray as a playable character. I think that would have been hilarious and awesome. But overall, it's pretty underwhelming. But, you know, it has Jordan, so it is what it is. Now we get to the weirdest game during this time. Jordan, Michael Jordan, Windy City Chaos. And to explain the plot, I'm just going to show you. Where are my friends, Peanut? Where are my friends? Yeah, that's basically the plot. Someone has taken Michael Jordan's friends, and he's going to throw basketballs at them. Once again, critics were very harsh of this game. It's actually a decent platformer. I think people are just upset that Michael Jordan wasn't in basketball games during this time, and he's in this platformer. As I mentioned, developers had to come up with a lot of creative ways to mitigate the Jordan contract. Some of them had a create player function like this one. Others actually had a fake Jordan placeholder like this one. NBA in the Zone 98 had a white Jordan, which is pretty funny. Now, the strangest one of them all comes from an ESPN blogger in 2013 named John Robinson. He alleges that there's a Konami code to unlock Jordan, which I'll show here. Obviously, this is a PlayStation game. I don't know which Konami basketball game it is. I have most of them, and I tried all of them. I'm not sure where you enter the code, but it's supposed to unlock Jordan. I've never had success, so if you've had success, leave something in the comments. He also alleges that in NBA Live 96, there's a Jordan code, but I think he's full of shit. The subsequent version of NBA Live in the Zone 2 has a fake Jordan in it, so I don't know. The next phase in Jordan's career involved his second return to basketball, this time with the Washington Wizards. A fun fact, Michael Jordan's return to the NBA was actually delayed one day due to licensing arguments and agreements with video games of all things. And based on this agreement, Michael Jordan could now be found in EA Sports games. So we are finally starting to get some good games with Jordan in them. 
As Michael Jordan returned to basketball and went to the Washington Wizards, he leaned on his fadeaway game because he didn't have the explosive quickness that he used to have. But conversely, this gave us all new video games with Michael Jordan. He made his return to the NBA Live franchise and we got a good game in 2000 with Jordan in it. He also made his debut in the 2K franchise on Dreamcast. But most importantly, NBA Street had the presence of mind to put legend Jordan, Jordan in his prime in this franchise. And I could do a whole video about that series. So I'm just gonna briefly touch on each of these franchises as Jordan was ending his career during that era. NBA Live 2000 on the Nintendo 64. This is actually a pretty good game. Jordan is in the game and you have to beat him in one-on-one -on -one to unlock him. And once you do, He's a free agent, and you can drop him on any team, so you're probably going to want to grab the crappiest player on the roster and swap him out. Now, with respect to the gameplay, it plays a lot like a lot of the older NBA Live games, except it's a little bit better. So it, it kind of is a, is a hybrid of arcade and simulation. So it's not a great simulation. It's not a great arcade game, but it's, it's a good game in the middle. And you're going to notice that the... The graphics are not great, but I think that's more of a symptom of the time and the N64 than it is the actual game. So, if you have an N64, check it out. And Jordan's going to go up and dunk it. I wish he did that in the game. For PlayStation, you don't have to unlock Jordan um, for this version of the game. He's already in the game. He's on the 90s team. And once again... Graphics aren't so good. I think the N64 version's better, but still, they're both pretty decent games. And here's another replay. Jordan does not yell on this one. He just dunks it. It's disappointing. Ah, right, well. On to the next one. So the next game we move on to is we get into the NBA Live franchises on the next console. So this is the PlayStation 2. And we have the 90s team again with Jordan. And then it kind of moves on to the Wizards era. And these games kind of move on. The gameplay gets a little bit better each time. They're kind of moving around with different camera angles, different presentations. You know, Jordan's on another all-star team here. And there's a wacky shot. Hey, it's good! Yes! NBA Shootout 2003. This game's okay. Um, it's nothing to write home about. You know, Check Bill Walton out, does Bill. commentary, Powerful which is super annoying. Shut up, Walton, you asshole. Sega, NBA 2K2. This is a good game. Um, probably the best simulation of this era. And it was kind of a sign of things to come, foreshadowing what would become of the 2K franchise. And at the time, Dreamcast was kind of the first next-gen platform to come out. So when that came out, there was a six-month head start between that and PlayStation 2. So I spent that six months in college playing a lot of this game. So I would say this is a good franchise. It still holds up today. Um, pretty fun to play. And obviously, Jordan's in it on the Wizards. So you're going to get Fadeaway Jordan. And that's kind of the way it goes. Had the spin around camera angle. NBA Tonight is a hot piece of garbage. And the only reason there's a lot of gameplay on here is because I wanted to shame it. It is crap. As a matter of fact, I would probably rather, rather play Jordan vs. Bird. It's just so bad. The controls are bad. It's not smooth. The shooting mechanic looks bad. The animations are bad. It's just a really big piece of crap. And the best way to sum up this is Jordan to get rejected by some jobber in the game. I mean, they're playing the Clippers, so who the hell knows who that is. But that sums it up nicely. NBA Courtside on the GameCube. This is actually a good franchise, and this is a fun game with Jordan in it. Um, he's on the Wizards, and I think if this game actually makes a jump to the Switch, it could be formidable um, coming out on some of the next generation platforms. It's a good game. Check it out. NBA Street, be still my beating heart. The hours we played playing this game. Jordan was officially licensed to this, so this is probably the best Jordan is going to look in any game during this era. It actually has his voice and audio in it. 
It's basically three-on-three -three arcade type playing. Um, in my opinion, it, it is better than NBA Jam. And it's rumored to make a comeback, so I hope it does. Great game. Good time. Um, you know, multiplayer action. Lots of over-the-top dunks. And, of course, you've got MJ. Good stuff. Finally, the 2K era began. And Michael Jordan was the centerpiece of this franchise, starting in 2010. It has been speculated that Michael Jordan will only lend his likeness to video games for at least $10 million. Suffice to say, I think 2K got the return on their investment. After Michael Jordan's final retirement, there was a long hiatus of his appearance in any video games. However, holy shit, the game that we received in 2011 was beyond anyone's expectations. It set the foundation for what a video basketball game should be. 2K11 was amazing, and the way they leveraged Michael Jordan was brilliant. If you've never played it, go play it. Even if you've played the newer 2K games, go back and play 2K11. The way they leveraged him, the competition, how to unlock him, it was perfect. So I'm going to go through a little bit of these 2K games and show you a little bit of Michael Jordan in each one of them. Took flight. Above all, changed the game and became a legend. I mean, that's just awesome. So, for all the 2K games starting in 2K11, they would create a narrative. And for this game, the Jordan challenge was basically if you unlocked all these different challenges, Michael Jordan could be enabled on any team in the modern era. So the Jordan challenge was 10 different challenges of things he actually accomplished. So there was an 86 playoff game where he went off against the Celtics, a 69 point game against the Cavs, a shootout where he beat Dominic Wilkins when he finally beat the Pistons in the playoffs in 1990, the 91 finals against the Lakers, the shrug where he hit a bunch of three pointers against Portland, when he put 55 up against the Knicks. Then you get into the Father's Day game, which was significant because he lost his father years before that. And you have the flu game, where a lot of people speculate he was given food poisoning. And then the last playoff game he had against the Jazz, where he hit that final shot. So once you complete all of these, Jordan is unlockable. And you can put him on any team. And it's a good time. Now, when they moved on to 2K12, the, the narrative was about the best team. So you could unlock these players, but to do that, you had to do a challenge. So for Jordans in this specific case, he had to beat the 92-93 Hornets, and it would unlock the 92-93 Bulls, the 90-91 Bulls, 97-98 Bulls, and 85-86 Bulls. For 2K13, the narrative was about the dream team, the 1992 elite team. And this was about having them play the current Team USA, which was the 2012 team. In all of these games, they have Jordan's mannerisms and gameplay down. Now, since these games have come out, the, iter the iterative nature and the innovation has kind of lost a step. Every year they add and dial back different features, but for the, same, for the most part, it's kind of the same game year after year. And I don't have all the 2K games, but you get the idea. I'm not going to belabor the point. Well, guys, that's it. If you like the video, like and subscribe. If you like to read, check out the parlay by Jefferson Webster on Amazon. Thanks.